Hello, my name is Adam Bow, and I'm part of the plugins team here at IBM Urban Code. This video is going to take you through the details of managing an OpenShift application with the OpenShift plugin for deploy. Let's get started. The OpenShift plugin wraps the OpenShift command line interface, so be sure to have the OpenShift CLI installed on your agent's machine. OpenShift is a system developed by Red Hat for automating deployment, operations, and scaling of containerized applications. To demonstrate the use cases of the OpenShift plugin, I'm going to deploy a PHP application on an OpenShift server, scale it, tag it, then perform a rollback. This demonstrates the typical lifecycle of an OpenShift application. I'll begin by deploying an OpenShift application. Let me add that step to the process from the OpenShift plugin. The first field I'll populate is the OpenShift URL. This corresponds to the URL the OpenShift server is running on. In my case, I'm running OpenShift Origin from their publicly provided Vagrant file, whose default address is https colon forward slash forward slash 10.2.2.2 colon 8443. So I can enter that into the OpenShift URL property text box. After that, I need to enter the login credentials, either a username and password combination or an access token. I'm going to enter in the default username and password into the set property fields, as well as log into the OpenShift web console with those credentials to ensure they work. The next property I need is the project name. This can be found in the OpenShift web console. I'll select the project that contains the application I wish to deploy. For me, this is example project. If I go to the settings, I can see the name of the project. I can copy this into the project property of the step. Note that the display name will not work here. Next, I need to specify a deployment configuration. A deployment config in OpenShift is a resource that provides a template for deployments. If I go to Overview and select the deployment I wish to deploy, I can see the deployment config listed under Selector. I'll copy that value into the deployment config property text box. After that, I need to select a deployment action. There are several values. Selecting the value New Deployment will trigger a new deployment of the application specified in the deployment config. Selecting Retry Last Failed Deployment will attempt to retry the last failed deployment of the application specified in the deployment config. Note this is only for failed deployments, not successes. Selecting Cancel Any In-Progress Deployment will cancel the latest deployment if it is still in process. Selecting Enable All Image Triggers for Deployment Config will enable the image triggers, which will cause a new deployment to be created each time a new version of the specified image repository is available. Note that on a rollback, the image triggers are automatically disabled, and selecting View Last Deployment will display the deployment information of the latest deployment of the application specified in the deployment config. For now, I'm going to perform a new deployment. In Hidden Properties, I have the option to skip TLS verification which will not check the validity of the server certificate. I'll check it now as this is a test environment, so I haven't set up a valid certificate. I can also specify the path to the OC script if OC isn't in the system path on the agent machine. I'll then accept the values for the step configuration by selecting OK, connect the step, and save the process so I can run it. When I submit the process, I can see the deployment was successful and that the deployment was updated in the OpenShift web console. Next, I'm going to create a step to scale the newly deployed application. I'll use the same values for OpenShift URL, username, password, and project as I did in the deploy step. The resource type can have one of two values. Deployment, which specifies scaling an application that has already been deployed, Note if this option is selected and the application hasn't been deployed yet, it will update in the application's template. Or Replication Controller to specify the scaling for a Replication Controller, which ensures that the specified number of replicas of a pod is running at all times. I'm going to leave it as deployment in order to target the new deployment. For resource name, I can find the name of the deployment in the OpenShift console. I can go to Overview and select the deployment I wish to scale, then in the details, I can see the name of the deployment listed under Selector. I can copy its value into the resource name property text box. Finally, I can enter the number of replicas I wish to scale the resource to. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to specify three. 
I'll have the same hidden properties here as for the deploy step. Once again, I'll accept the step configuration, connect the step, and save the process so I can run it. When I submit the process, I can see the scale operation succeeded and is reflected in the OpenShift web console. Now I'll tag the image running in our deployment application container. I'm going to use the same values for OpenShift URL, username, and password as in the deploy step. For source, I can specify it in two ways, by tag or pull spec. Tags are easy to read definitions for an image, whereas a pull spec is a uniquely generated identifier for the image. To find values for these, I'll go to overview. Here, inside the container, I can see the namespace and stream of the image. To get the tag, I can click into the image and see a list of tags. Since I haven't tagged anything yet, there's only the default latest tag. So if I want to specify the image by tag definition, we can enter in namespace forward slash stream name colon tag, or in my case, example project forward slash hello world app colon latest. I can also use the pull spec definition, which would be simply the stream name at symbol pull spec. I don't need to specify the project, as pull specs are unique across all projects. For my example, since the pull spec is too long to fit in the GUI, I'll go to Actions, Edit YAML, and copy the full pull spec from the image element. I would then enter Hello World app at symbol full pull spec. For destination, I can list tags, separating multiple tags with spaces. So for my example, I'll create two tags on the same image. Example project hello world app dev and example project hello world app prod. Note that I can specify images from different namespaces and image streams, but since I currently only have a single image stream, it will have to refer to itself. I can select to keep the tags updated, so if my source tag changes in the future, the destination tag will always refer to it. For source type, I can have it automatically detect the format or explicitly select reference by tag or image, pull spec. I can also have an external Docker image be the source tag. In the case of an external Docker image, I may need to allow insecure imports. I'll have the same hidden properties here as for the deploy step. I'll again accept the step configuration, connect the step, and save the process so I can run it. When I submit the process, I can see the tag operation succeeded and is reflected in the OpenShift web console. Last, I'll roll back to the initial deployment. I'll use the same values for OpenShift URL, username, password, and project as in the deploy step. For deployment name config, I can add either the name of the deployment or the deployment configuration referencing the deployment. I can view deployments by navigating to Browse Overview and selecting the deployment config Hello World app. I can then either enter in just the deployment configuration or the deployment name. By default, none of the scaling settings, strategy, or triggers are preserved on a rollback. This is to prevent it from simply reverting back to a later deployment after rolling back. I can override these defaults by selecting any of the checkboxes here. However, for the demo purposes, I'll leave them unchecked. In the hidden properties, I have the same options as the ones for the deploy step, as well as a few new options. I can select Dry Run to only display what the result of the rollback would look like without actually performing it. This is useful if I'm unsure of the result. I can also just display the impact the rollback will have on the deployment config in various formats, once again not actually performing the rollback. Since I want to actually roll back, I'll leave these untouched. Once more, I'll accept the step configuration, connect the step, and save the process so I can run it. When I submit the process, I can see the rollback operation succeeded and that the image triggers were disabled. I can also see the rollback in the OpenShift web console. Performing these steps has taken us through the typical lifecycle of a containerized application in an OpenShift environment. If any of the properties are unclear, please refer to the OpenShift CLI Operations 3.0 overview. As the plugin uses the CLI to execute actions, Referencing how the CLI works should provide a greater understanding into how the plugin works. 
The documentation can be found at ibm.biz forward slash openshift plugin. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck with your deployments.